Hello again, Cons here. Slowly getting through that slump, but I have another video regarding Kulve for everybody. Sorry, Kulv. Listen, I'm going to call it Kulve. You can't stop me. But um, yeah, I know people are still struggling with the fight, and I don't mean that in a bad way. That's just how it is. So I thought I would do a video on a fairly easy way, similar to how I had the Raging Brachidios video on using sticky farming for breaking the head. I thought I would do one to get all of the Zora parts possible, uh, as well as just make the grind a little bit easy for anybody struggling to actually beat the quest. As you can see, I have a poverty build and a less poverty build so that people without good decorations can still use the set. I'll show you the decoration distribution for this at least. Uh, I'll flash it on screen now and then I'll show you it for the rich set. And here are the decorations for the rich set. Uh, I'll talk about these skills now in a second. The thing is, I do want to mention that I'm not particularly great with sticky HPG. Um, this is the Zora Magdaros HPG, by the way. Uh, so these skills might not be optimal and feel free to adjust them. I'll explain to you why they're all here in a second. And then you can sort of get an idea for what skills you should be running. Here are the skills on the rich set. Uh, you can see the second page is pretty much worthless aside from Guild Pride giving us Carving Master. Um, one additional carve and yeah, I, I think it was probably a good time to talk about all these skills and obviously you can run the poverty build and change the skills however you like accordingly. So the idea behind the run is to use the double shiny exploit that I talked about in a previous video, I'll have that linked somewhere probably, um, to farm as many shinies as we can and to also use the fact that Kulve will flee after about 6 or 7 minutes if you don't do enough DPS to her and so the idea is that we do enough DPS to break the gold plating from her horns, use carving master to carve that 4 times get as many shinies as we can with the Geology 3 exploit, and then let her flee for the investigation rewards. By doing all of these things, over the course of around 6 or 7 minutes, you'll have gained a whole bunch of her materials. You have the possibility to get all of them as far as I'm aware, uh, and you'll be able to make her armor and you'll be able to make all of her weapons. You will have to have beat her once, I believe, to make her weapons, so you'll have to find a, a team or do that yourself if you're struggling. But yeah, the idea is that even if you're not good enough to reach the DPS check, and I know that a lot of people are struggling to do that consistently, you still have a way to grind out the RNG, because I know some of her weapons are quite meta, especially for the ones that use elemental. I haven't done the maths on whether it's faster to farm her manually, I would assume so, because you get more of her rarest drop, the gemstone that gives you 300 points, but I, I, you can see the rewards for yourself, give it a shot a few times and come to your own conclusions. It really does depend on how quickly you can beat her and how consistently you can beat her. That's something that only you'll be able to, to, to tell, you know? So let's talk about the skills, I guess in order of importance. Geologist at level 3 is obviously essential for the double shiny exploit. Carving Master, which you get from running uh, four pieces of guild work, is obviously essential for the fourth carve on the gold plating, although you could technically do it without either of those skills. They do increase the efficiency uh, significantly each. Part Breaker makes a huge difference because obviously it makes you break the horns faster. Uh, this route requires Part Break 3. You can do it without it, it'll just take you a little bit longer to do all the necessary DPS. Um, and then obviously building on from that, it's just DPS skills really. We've got some attack boost, peak performance, agitator, uh, artillery, because we're going to be using things like stickies and clusts and uh, health boosters is really nice because it means that you don't get one shot by the tail swipe. And slinger capacity is also really good for the double flint shot so you don't have to spend the whole hunt going around and gathering slinger ammo. The method has been playing on screen, hopefully you've been keeping a bit of an eye on it. Basically what we do is tenderize her body parts so that when we flint shot her they break. We want to just break the gold mantles off of her so that we get shiny drops from them. You do the front two arms and the chest, but most importantly you do the horns because we want those four calves which give you sort of the best return on investment. I found that the corner that I dragged her to here is the most consistent for getting off flint shots because she's always surrounded by walls. Uh, I also have to ping my cat to bring it closer, you could just turn the cat off if you prefer, although I like to have it with me. Once you have flint shotted her twice, she'll go into rage mode. At this point, you can pop on like a ghillie mantle or something or just collect all of the shinies on the ground. You should be getting them two each because of geologist level three. Then, now that she's in rage mode, you can just pop her to sleep, use your sleep ammo. And by the way, I'm using the Zora Magdaros bow gun for like, this is the reason I was using artillery is because we're using stickies and clusts and stuff like that and it does have sleep ammo on it. So yeah, you put her to sleep and then you wake her up with the Wyvern ammo and some bombs. You can obviously run points of Bombardier if you have the spare slots to increase that damage too, especially if you're struggling to get her parts to break. At this point, her horn should be broken. It might take one more flint shot, but that's fine too. In terms of getting extra DPS, maybe you haven't, weren't able to get all of these skills and maybe her horns are still intact. You have a few options. You can take Paralysis. I like to bring a Paralysis weapon on my cat. At this point, that's when the Paralysis tends to go off. Obviously, you have Sticky and Clust on your weapon. We've used the Sleep and you can't get multiple Paralyses, but you can use the Ledge and the Bugs to mount her as examples. You should have an additional Flint Shot waiting for you. And with all of the openings that these various things give you, you can obviously spam Clusts on her head and Sticky Ammo. And you should, it should be more than easy to get her horns to break at this point. And so yeah, once her horns break, just carve them the requisite four times because of Carving Master. 
make sure to grab the rest of the shinies. You can flinch on her one more time if you like. But we do want to avoid doing too much DPS to her because we don't want her to go into phase two or extend her timer. I've had runs where she actually flees after six minutes or so. Um, so it is possible to get her to leave quite early if you don't spend too much time messing around here or doing too much DPS. Now you can either die, you can sort of sit around, waste some time, or you can fuck us back to camp. Remember, you don't want to do too much damage to her because you don't want her to go into phase two. Unless, obviously, you want to finish her up. But that, 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 that's your prerogative. Anyway, at this point, roughly three, three and a half minutes should have passed. And you should have gained something like eight or uh, shiny drop gathers and a bunch of calves. And also, you should be halfway on another th three and a half minutes away from her leaving the investigation. So you can get those quest rewards too. Now, I'm still not 100% sure whether or not it's even worth waiting for the quest to expire. Because of the loading times and all that kind of stuff, I'm edging towards concluding that it is, but I'm not 100% sure. So do it a few times, and if you find that the extra 3 or 4 minutes that you have to wait for the quest to finish aren't worth the rewards you get for it, because they do drop a lot of sort of worthless nuggets, then feel free to just return from the quest now and spam the first 3.5 minutes worth of, of quest and don't bother waiting for the quest to finish. Personally, I do tend to wait for it to finish though. And that's all there really is to it. You get the nuggets from this, you can get the scales from this, you can get the shells from this, you can get the spiral horns from this, from the calves, you can also get the gems from the calves, I've gotten that a couple of times too. They're not even that rare, especially because we have four calves each. So yeah, you can get a lot of materials really fast and make all of the armor and all of the weapons that you need. Hopefully I haven't missed anything important. Again, obviously if, if you prefer to just hunt Corvée to completion and you can do it consistently either with a team or on your own, then you know, go ahead and do that. <laughs> Don't tell me, this is mostly meant for people who sort of struggle to farm her through that route or want something a bit more consistent. Uh, but yeah, I hope this helps. I hope this helps you get those weapons that you need to get your meta sets going so you can, you know, optimal DPS all the Black Diablos as you feel like with your Kiar ICB. <laughs> but yeah, I hope, I, hope, I hope this helps and I hope you have a lovely day. Take it easy. Bye bye.